Does anyone here know the collective noun for a bunch of psychiatrists? For psychologists, it's a complex of psychologists, but I looked it up before I came because our next speaker is a psychiatrist and Ian was, so the collective noun for a psychiatrist is a delusion of psychiatrists, <laughs> which is interesting. So now to the question of brain foods. If we consume lots of eggs, which contains the, the, uh, choline, the building block of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, do we improve memory? Does ginkgo biloba turn us all into Albert Einstein? To answer these and many other questions, our next speaker has flown from Australia's most beautiful city, Melbourne. He is a psychiatrist whose research interests include schizophrenia, early psychosis prevention, but his most recent and fascinating study, from my point of view, is on the efficacy of omega-3 fatty acids in young people at risk for psychosis. Uh, and that study has been selected as one of the most important studies of 2010 by Medscape Psychiatry. Please give a rousing mind and its potential welcome to Associate Professor Paul Aminger from Origin Youth Health. Thank you very much for this kind invitation. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me and a great honor to be invited to participate in this fantastic and very diverse uh, conference. Uh, to give you a little bit more about my background, I come from the, uh, I think, first ranked city in the world, Melbourne, but I was actually born in the second ranked in Vienna. And <coughs> I came to, uh, studied in Vienna, and I trained as child and adolescent psychiatrist and also an adult psychiatry. And uh, about seven, eight years ago, I met Patrick McGorry, and this brought me to Melbourne and to, to Origin. Uh, today I want to talk about food uh, for your brain. And uh, actually, I came across uh, a few articles which make really very clear and obvious that there's quite a direct uh, uh, relationship. Uh, between nutrition and your brain function. If you look uh, at evolution, uh, you can see that the brain growth was pretty much uh, related with uh, what nutrition was available, and more specifically, DHA, and I will talk about DHA, uh, one of the omega-3 fatty acids uh, more in this talk, uh, pretty uh, related to the cognitive skills, but also the size of, of the brain. Uh, in, interestingly, and this uh, is also part uh, presented in this uh, very nice uh, review, uh, what we see in uh, more recent years in civilization, uh, we see an interesting association between a lack of uh, unsaturated fatty acids and depression. And there's more research in this area done over the last 10 years, and there's now uh, quite consistent evidence that there's a whole range of uh, psychiatric disorders uh, and mental health problems which are associated with a lack of uh, unsaturated fatty acids. And those conditions are de depression, anger, imp impulsivity, uh, but also uh, conditions in, in, in children like ADHD or uh, uh, dyslexia and even uh, autism. Um, other conditions, and I will focus on this in, in the uh, second, in the latter part of my talk, is that actually psychosis and schizophrenia uh, may be treat treatable or even preventable by omega-3 fatty acids. And also, uh, it should be mentioned that in, in elderly people, cognitive decline and, uh, is associated with uh, nutrition as, as well. So how comes, how is this possible? Uh, I think it's, it's very important to be aware that about 50, 60% of the brain are actually fats. Those fats are in the cell membranes and they uh, are the basically uh, uh, the building blocks of, of the brain. And there are different fats, saturated and unsaturated fatty acids, and in the brain, the ratio of the unsaturated fatty acids, uh, like DHA, uh, but also arachidonic acid, uh, is very high compared to other tish tissues. Um, th there's a whole range of mechanisms uh, which 
ex may explain, and there's further research uh, ongoing, uh, how omega-3 fatty acids may work. Uh, they interfere and influence uh, serotonin and dopamine, the uh, uh, neurotransmitters. They're also uh, quite important for cytokines, and, uh, which are inflammatory parameters. And inflammation is a very important principle in, in, in many conditions, physical and mental health conditions. Uh, they influence glutathione. That's the most important redox system to uh, protect the brain and other organs from oxidative stress. And also neuroprotectin is a, a, a recent discovery that DHA is a precursor of this molecule which actually protects and saves uh, uh, nerve cells. So what's known uh, about psychosis and uh, omega-3 uh, fatty acids and, and fatty acid metabolism. There are a few uh, interesting observations. The people with schizophrenia have a lower uh, pain and temperature sensitivity. The incidence of arthritis is dramatically lower than in, in other people. And a very interesting observation which uh, relates back to the cytokines and the inflammation uh, uh, mechanisms is that Actually, fever improves symptoms in schizophrenia. And the first person, this was from David Horobin, who uh, wrote, put this together in, in, in the 70s, but the first person who uh, actually noticed as a clinician was Julius Wagner Jaurek. Uh, he uh, was actually awarded with the Nobel Prize uh, for his fever therapy. And uh, this is the first uh, clinical observation that fever is quite a powerful and, and, and um, substances which interfere with inflammatory parameters and cytokines are actually quite potential, uh, powerful treatment agents. And those are the, uh, just to show you uh, of, of which fa fatty acids I'm talking on the uh, right-hand side are the omega-3 fatty acids, and what's important, EPA and DHA are precursors of anti-inflammatory uh, uh, cytokines. Uh, whereas arachidonic acid, arachidonic acid is uh, in, common in, 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 in meat, for instance, uh, is a precursor of inflammatory uh, cytokines. This is um, just showing, if you look at the fatty acid uh, profile uh, in people with schizophrenia, you can actually see deficits. They have significantly lower levels of unsaturated fatty acids. And this is uh, a, a large epidemiological study, which is basically the same message. In people uh, who have psychosis or attenuated psychotic symptoms, the levels of omega-3 fatty acids are lower. And this... Uh, basically led us to, the, to uh, our trial to investigate if people who have sub-threshold symptoms, who are not fully psychotic, uh, can be treated. Uh, this is a stage of, of uh, the illness where the intervention with antipsychotics is still uh, quite controversial because of, of side effects. Also, there have been trials that were successful, but uh, people, people argued that uh, we are treating potentially people who don't need antipsychotics. And so we started this uh, trial of uh, indicated prevention in young people with uh, attenuated psychotic symptoms, and we screened around 250 and randomized 81 people into treatment arms, and those were the conditions. They received state-of-the-art treatment uh, without any uh, antipsychotic medication, and on top, uh, two grams of fish oil or placebo. And we followed them up for 12 months. And uh, the fish oil, this shows you, so main, the main com compounds of the fish oil were I cause a pentanoic uh, acid and DHA uh, to cause a hexanoic acid. And we were also interested um, 
if the people actually took those capsules. So we used gas chromatography and analyzed their erythrocytes. And uh, this is just one uh, example for such a gas chromatography. And uh, what we saw, there were actually quite dramatic changes. So people who took the fish oil had a dramatic uh, decrease uh, of their omega-6 compared to their omega-3 uh, levels. So we can be convinced that the people actually took their, their capsules. So the question is, how powerful is, is such an intervention? And this is the, the primary outcome was how many people develop a psychotic disorder within 12 months. And in the omega-3 group, we had only two people, and that was 4% who developed the psychosis, uh, whereas in the placebo group, it was almost 30%. And this is a categorical outcome measure. So it's always interesting to look at dimensional continuous measures as well. And that's what we did here. And we looked at symptoms like positive symptoms, negative symptoms. Positive symptoms are delusions and hallucinations. Negative symptoms is uh, apathy and anhedonia. But we also looked at uh, functioning, the GAF score, and, and depressive symptoms. And, uh, what we saw is that on all those secondary outcome measures uh, with rather large effect sizes, the omega-3 treated people improved more than uh, people who received the placebo capsules. And because we were interested how this would relate to uh, the effects of antipsychotics, we, took, uh, we made a comparison to a trial of an antipsychotic. And they had the same criteria, used similar measures, and uh, if you compare this, you can see that the actual effect sizes across all the measures are dramatically better for, for omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, we're also interested to see if uh, those key fatty acids, DHA, arachidonic acid, and another fatty acid, nervonic acid. Nervonic acid is, uh, whereas DHA is most important for gray matter, uh, uh, NA, nervonic acid, is most important, the most abundant fatty acid in, in myelin, the, uh, the substance around the uh, nerve dendrites. And what we found is, uh, was, first of all, an association with DHA, which confirmed that there is uh, a, a relationship, but uh, we were quite surprised also to see quite strong correlations for nervonic acid uh, with symptoms, uh, negative symptoms, depressive symptoms, but also functioning. And based on this, uh, we were interested if uh, any of those uh, end products like uh, DHA, arachidonic acid, or nervonic acid, which have also been reported to be lower in people with schizophrenia, if they are actually, if they predict, uh, if, if this could be an, used as an indicator that someone is at a high risk of psychosis. And uh, we, this shows uh, the comparison of people who made a transition to psychosis to those who didn't make a transition to psychosis. And on the, on the left-hand side, for nervonic acid, we found a significant association, which uh, basically emphasizes the importance of white matter, of nervonic acid, to the process of uh, t transitioning to a full threshold uh, psychotic disorder. Uh, for, for, D DH, for DHA, uh, the difference was uh, only at the trend level, but if, if, which could be also an issue of, of sample size. So with a larger sample size, the differences may have been significant. So is it, uh, another topic uh, I, I want to cover is, is there any ev evidence that other foods uh, help the brain? I think we've all heard about that uh, a healthy diet is very important. 
And this nice pyramid uh, shows you on the bottom those things uh, which you should have a, lo uh, a lot, and on the top things which you probably shouldn't have t too many. Uh, one of those diets where there is actually quite good evidence and a lot of uh, 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 research already been carrying out is on the effects of the Mediterranean diet. And this diet is characterized by high ratios of monounsaturated fatty acids, like, o like olive oil. Uh, moderate alcohol intake, I really like the second point, that you, you get good points if you drink a glass of, of, of wine with your meal. Uh, high intake on, on, on uh, cereal, fruits, nuts, uh, vegetables, low intake on, on, on meat products. And we have already, uh, for physical conditions and for mortality, uh, this is uh, other results from a large uh, cohort study which showed that uh, for coronary heart disease, for cancer, but also for mortality in general, there were strong associations in favor of uh, for, for people who kept to such a traditional uh, diet. And so this is from 2003, and more recently, uh, this paper has been published, and this is only one of uh, a, a number of studies in larger cohorts uh, uh, where the effects of a diet, here again the Mediterranean diet, uh, was investigated uh, if there's a potential to prevent uh, uh, mental conditions. And in this, in this uh, cohort, there was a, a decrease in depression. Um, this is a very busy slide, and I go through it very quickly. Uh, beside omega-3 fatty acids on top and uh, the Mediterranean diet, are there other uh, nutri uh, the other food uh, where there's good evidence that uh, mental health problems may be uh, prevented? And there's quite consistent and good evidence for, for vitamins, like vitamin E, vitamin D. There's good evidence for vitamin uh, C as an antioxidant uh, in relation, to, for instance, to cognitive decline in, in, in elder people. And there's also good evidence for, for zinc uh, and, 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 and iron. I don't want to go into this with more, much more detail. And the, the last question, uh, which was raised uh, and I was asked to cover is, uh, are there any in innovative mental health interventions for young people? And uh, uh, I must say yes, and I think Australia is in a very fortunate uh, position. There's a new um, strategy of treating young people early with uh, not just psychosis, but with all sorts of uh, mental conditions uh, through Headspace, the new uh, national mental health platform. And I think this is a, a fantastic uh, uh, new, new development. Another uh, um, important uh, thing to, to, to mention is that prevention is still not uh, appreciated enough, and that indicated prevention where you, get, where you treat people with, who have beginning symptoms of a, s a serious condition early to prevent uh, further uh, transition and to psychosis or to major uh, depressive disorders uh, is, is still crucial. And omega-3 fatty acids are only one component uh, in, in, in which should be further investigated. And uh, at the moment, uh, this is our latest uh, work. We're trying to replicate in a large number of uh, 320 uh, people in 10 international sites. If we can confirm the studies of the first omega-3 trial, and uh, the trial is started re uh, recruiting about a year ago, will be finished in, in a couple of years, and if this is successful, uh, we would have enough evidence to suggest omega-3 fatty acids as a first, first line 
treatment in people with beginning psychosis. Thank you.